Hey Zalibus, this is Super Zamaka Babakio, and today I wanted to cover up a very specific subject. One of the most popular parts of the Royal Rumble, and that is the surprise entry. The person who seemingly out of nowhere comes back and surprises everyone. The AJ Styles of this year, the Kevin Nash of many years ago, potentially the, the Edge or the John Cena. He comes back from a horrendous injury and goes on to main event, Wrestlemania. But, there's plenty of names being thrown around. This Royal Rumble is probably the, one of the only ones in recent years where you could probably name at least 20, 25 of the individual entrants into the Royal Rumble match. So, to, to say there's going to be you know, any more than five surprise entrants is probably pushing it. But, I've got a list of 10 people which I think would be the best for this year. Now, of course, if we're talking about the top 10 surprise entrants for the Royal Rumble match, we could be talking about anyone. We could be talking about Hulk Hogan. We could be talking about Sting, if he could come back to wrestling at this point. And, you know, we could be talking about anyone. But I'm talking about the people who are most likely going to be able to, or just so coincidentally have said things, or maybe have hinted at things. In the most recent history, which means they're probably more likely than others to be rumoured for this year's Royal Rumble match. But hey, if you like what you see, make sure you leave a like on this video. Hit a huge thumbs up, as hard as freaking possible, and I'll be amazed. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe as well to the channel whilst you're at it. But let's get in to those surprise entrants. So they're going to start off at number 10 for the top 10 surprise entrants for the Royal Rumble 2017 by talking about Bobby Roode, the glorious one. And why is Bobby Roode a possibility? Now, Bobby Roode is a possibility purely because of his... Well, this is my opinion, and I'm going to say this now. This, this one's my opinion. Because it was really hard to think of number 10 unless I was going to go down some crazy route. And Bobby Roode just seemed to make sense to me because he had a huge feud with Ty Dillinger. Now, he has a match the night beforehand with Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes, we know that. He's probably not going to win the NXT Championship because they've already hinted that Cassius Ono, or alternatively known as Chris Hero, is going to debut very soon. And he's going to probably be the one that beats Nakamura for the championship, which means that Nakamura debuts after the Rumble. But obviously, even one of those events could happen. There could be a cheeky entrance a la Rusev a couple of years ago, where he just showed up from NXT Royal Rumble and then showed up on the main roster later on. Who knows at this point, but Bobby Roode, the reason why I'm saying him as, as potential entrant into the match, is that he could show up as number 10 and be the ultimate troll and potentially put himself over as a huge heel. And there's a lot of people who really like Bobby Roode, and he's supposed to be the bad guy, but his theme music is so glorious, no pun intended, that he is already over the fans, the fans sing his theme tunes, the fans would cheer him and even some of the American fans would probably cheer him over Nakamura at NXT TakeOver so the one way of getting huge heat given everyone wants to see Ty Dillinger is at number 10 have come out instead Bobby Roode. We'll come to Ty Dillinger later on but Bobby Roode number 10 for me is just for me, for me, if there's going to be anyone else uh, other than this list of other nine people who could potentially debut at the Royal Rumble, it's going to be him. Moving on to number nine, we have Rob Van Dam. Now, Rob Van Dam, very simply put, he's just the guy who shows up every so often. He does a bit of part-time work. He puts a few people over. And I think personally for the brand split, he would be perfect to make his return to WWE at this point. Maybe to go on to NXT. Maybe then go up to SmackDown. I don't think Raw is going to be the best place to go for him. You know, even as an enhancement talent. You've got so many superstars potentially rumoured as either leaving or potentially moving on elsewhere or being fired soon. You're going to have to have some new blood coming to WWE. Especially with the rumours of what Chris Jericho is doing after WrestleMania. And just the amount of jobbers they've got. Maybe some new blood on Raw or SmackDown would be great. And Rob Van Dam has done a surprise entrance before and he hasn't been seen in WWE for a long time. And I could just see Rob Van Dam being more available than Kevin Nash at this moment in time, especially with Kevin Nash's paper thin quad muscles, but whatever. Number eight, 
another old school WWE person from the golden age of SmackDown into the platinum age of SmackDown. As long as they keep going on like this, it will be anyway. We're talking about Shelton Benjamin. Why Shelton Benjamin? Well, because he was supposed to debut a long, long time ago, back when SmackDown first started. In fact, it was the first or second SmackDown he was hinted at returning to SmackDown and then unfortunately it seems at the development center or during an indie match I don't know exactly he had suffered a really really bad injury and had to take time off and apparently we were helping him with that and getting him some assistance for that but he potentially could be a huge surprise and him and Kofi Kingston in a what ludicrous object can we possibly land on and still get back into the Royal Rumble match. Fuck it, let's put a ladder into the match anyway. Would be an amazing contest and something that I just think the fans would love to see. Even if it's a one-off, Sean Benjamin's my number eight. Number seven, Shinsuke Nakamura. Why Shinsuke Nakamura? Because there is every possibility that he could lose a championship at NXT TakeOver. Now, the reason he's higher up the list than Bobby Roode is because purely because Shinsuke Nakamura is a much higher rated superstar worldwide. And he's someone who's been rumored many, many, many times to be coming over. Now, he could always debut as the NXT champion. It's just a nice surprise to see how the crowd takes to him, which with a very, very passionate Royal Rumble crowd, which it always is. You only have to go back to see the reactions in the last three or four years of the Royal Rumbles and you'll see that most of the crowd are the passionate kind of WWE fans. The ones that will not just cheer Roman Reigns because you tell him to or because you pipe cheers through the speakers. No, you're going to get booze. Which then goes to say to me that I think Shinsuke Nakamura would get over big time. Whether it would actually happen or not, I have no idea, but it would be a wonderful thing to see especially if he was just still the NXT champion and just decided you know what I'm gonna go into rumble number 20 or something or maybe even number five just give him an additional spot and see what he can do see how the other wrestlers react to him in the ring just imagine having him and the likes of I don't know John Cena maybe facing off in the ring just imagine that number six the returning Finn Balor why so low for Finn? Because having just been to the UK Championship Tournament myself and seeing Finn, yes, he's now doing appearances, but I would say that his return is somewhat off. But who wouldn't want to see a number 30 appearance from Finn Balor? A surprise entry after such a long time out with a horrendous injury, which he's still recovering from now. There's been rumoured that it's actually mania he's due back for, and he'll probably be back somewhere around fast lane which is the next raw pay-per-view but honestly i feel that this is a definite possibility and maybe should be higher on the list because finn balor the previous and first universal champion has a serious score to settle with kevin owens the newest universal champion or whoever it is roman reigns maybe they could run an angle that roman reigns wins the belt which not many people want to see of course but you know, it potentially could happen at Royal Rumble against Kevin Owens. And Finn Balor comes back stating that he wants the belt. And maybe have the Royal Rumble winner be Finn for WrestleMania. Kevin Owens getting his rematch at Fastlane. Meaning Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor in basically the match that effectively settles in that match. Could happen. Maybe you could even add Seth Rollins to the mix. Seeing as apparently his, his feud with Triple H is on the back burner who knows but Finn Balor would be an amazing and has to be number 30 if that happens moving on to this one this one's putting it a bit more unrealistic but if it happened it would blow the wrestling world and universe into a million bazillion little pieces by the reaction alone and that is Shawn Michaels why Shawn Michaels because who's to say that entering the Royal Rumble match is effectively ending your retirement as long as Shawn Michaels doesn't win, or if he wins, he goes to WrestleMania to face AJ Styles, we're all going to be happy because he doesn't necessarily break his retirement promise. There's plenty of old retired WWE superstars who have come back at the Royal Rumble just for that one-off show. And it would be amazing, maybe occurrence, to have him and The Undertaker in the ring. 
Undertaker's got rid of everyone, maybe at number 23, and then Shawn Michaels' music hits, and the whole place just goes into bedlam. Now, this is more of the maybe unrealistic ones, but Shawn Michaels, there's been so much potential and hype around this, and he seems in good shape, and he's been training at the WWE Performance Center in Connecticut. Maybe this is something that could happen. Number four should have been number 10. Ty Dillinger. Why the perfect 10? Well, the perfect 10 just has to happen. It has to happen. And this is what I was saying earlier run about Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode comes out number 10. Ty Dillinger, pissed, comes out number 11. Takes Bobby Roode out and gets a huge amount of crowd support behind him because he didn't get his number 10 slot. But the crowd goes mental because he's there already and it shows up as a troll on purpose. Ty Dillinger then gets his rise in WWE, send him over to SmackDown, give the guy an opportunity, he will run with it. You can already hear it in the crowd. Every single crowd now is chanting 10. It's almost as getting it's almost as popular as the yes chant. As I'm sure Tyler Bates Wave will be just as popular. Which brings us to number three. Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate wins the WWE United Kingdom Championship and he then becomes world renowned because WWE plugged the shit out of that thing and to be honest with you it was well deserved. They had one of the matches of the year and Jesus Christ I take either of them Pete Dunne or Tyler Bate but I think Pete Dunne maybe needs a bit more time maybe in NXT or something before he comes up. Not because He's not known. He could he could fit into Raw or SmackDown right now, in my opinion. But Tyler Bates is known as a UK champion, so why not have him in the Rumble? It would be insanity to think about it, but maybe that's going to happen. And who knows? Maybe Tyler Bate could get a shock elimination on someone like Brock Lesnar. Have a Maven moment as long as they don't fail with the push afterwards. Tyler Bate, 19-year-old, could easily go in and smash it. Now before we go on to the final two, I want to give one honorary mention, and that is to Kenny Omega. Now, Kenny Omega, everyone's talking about him. Everyone's saying he's going to be number three in this Rumble, so he can come in, he does his thing with WWE, and becomes a megastar overnight. Unfortunately, Kenny Omega's contract doesn't end until after the Royal Rumble. And the rumours are is that he has already signed a new contract with NJPW, which means he's not coming over. He's just holding out for more money. But hopefully he, he is not that case. But one just special mention because otherwise he would be number one. It's very simple. Kenny Omega would be number one if that wasn't a fact. But unfortunately, Kenny Omega doesn't look like it's going to happen unless something Amazing has happened between WWE and NJPW, which moves me on to number two, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Now, why why am I saying Ric Flair? He's retired, for God's sake. Well, A, technically, no, he hasn't. Okay, no, he hasn't. And B, sorry, he went to TNA, for Christ's sake, or Impact Wrestling, whatever you want to call it. And Ric Flair tweeted out a very, very specific tweet stating that he could potentially enter the Royal Rumble. Maybe it could be a little bit of a, you know, a bit of advertisement, a little bit of a, you have to watch because I might enter. But I think that potentially could have been the notification that we may have one of the shock entrants of the Royal Rumble at his age. He doesn't have to go to WrestleMania. He can just appear for a couple of entrants before he gets eliminated by maybe Braun Strowman or something. But what an amazing reaction would be for Ric Flair to be back in a WWE arena and ring again. And it would answer the fact as to why he's just suddenly disappeared from TV. And the number one surprise entrant for this year's Raw Rumble match has got to go to Joe. Not just random Joe, average Joe, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe has not been seen on NXT since losing his rematch for the NXT Championship. And it seems almost absolutely 100% destined that he will make his debut either at the Royal Rumble match or taking some time off till after WrestleMania or making a shock appearance beforehand to debut in the WWE proper on Raw or SmackDown. And Samoa Joe has plenty of opponents he can go after. He could even win 
the Royal Rumble match and go on to face his longtime adversary and make one of the matches of the year against AJ Styles. He could even use it to start a feud with John Cena. If John Cena was to lose his match against AJ Styles and enter the Royal Rumble himself. Who knows? I, for, for me, Samoa Joe just is the absolute 100% the most likely to do it. And I, I think he'd still be a shock because I think some people are still thinking that Samoa Joe is the part-timer from NXT. Who's not going to ever come up because he's just happy being there. But that brand split has done wonders for many superstars including the likes of John Cena, just as I mentioned. And maybe he could do wonders for Samoa Joe. But that's my top 10. What are your top 10 surprise entrants for the Royal Rumble? But also put who you think is going to win the Royal Rumble 2017 in the comment section below. But that is it from me. Thank you so much for watching this. Remember to leave a like on the video if you're going to hit the thumbs up button as hard as freaking possible. That'd be amazing. Thank you. Also, don't forget to subscribe using the link that's going to pop up on the screen. Looks like a green and blue icon. Go and check that and click it if you want to see more WWE Supercard, W2K17, and just WWE content in general. And I'll see you soon. One last thing before you go, and that is to... I don't have a camera. This is really awkward, so... Bye! Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, remember the WWE Slam Crate. If you haven't checked it out already, go check out the link that's going to show up in the description and the comment section. And also, just check it on screen if you want to just type it in yourself. www.lootcrate.com slash barbecue. Hit the code ZOMG and you'll get yourself 10% off your first crate. Which includes this incredible Seth Rollins t-shirt in this Road to WrestleMania edition, which just so happens to be where the Royal Rumble starts, the Road to WrestleMania. So, go get your own one. That link in the description, comment section, or just on the screen now with the code ZOMG. I'll see you guys soon.